Hello and welcome to my channel. Here I review new movies and television shows. Today's topic is the new film, Heretic. It's a psychological thriller about a strange man inviting two young Mormon women into his home to talk about their religion. It was written and directed by co-directors Scott Beck and Brian Woods. It stars Hugh Grant, Sophie Thatcher, and Chloe East. Heretic is a slow burn mystery that challenges the idea of faith and the modern concept of religion while creating a tense and horrific situation. It starts by introducing us to the two leads, a pair of Mormon missionaries called Sister Paxton and Sister Barnes. During the opener, the two young ladies reach the home they're out to visit and meet a man named Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed presents himself as a friendly older man just looking to learn about their religion. After being invited in, the sisters quickly find out they can't leave. Mr. Reed has some kind of game for them to play, and the only way out is to play it. Let's leave the story for last and start with the cast, which is the highlight of the film. There aren't many actors in this film, with most of the screen time going to the two young Mormon women and Mr. Reed. The extras are called on to do stereotypical little roles and do them well enough. The three leads, however, all do a standout job and deserve to be commended. Hugh Grant as Mr. Reed is an incredibly well-read psychopath. He invites the women inside and then starts off by gently prodding them about their beliefs. He challenges their faith by targeting the most archaic parts of their religion and tries to guide them into unstable ground. As he picks apart their religion, he continually leads them further and further into his home. The deeper he gets, the more unhinged he becomes, until finally, it becomes clear he's a madman drunk on power. Grant plays the villain well, making the audience uncomfortable with his genuine glee at the situation. Sophie Thatcher plays Sister Barnes, the older of the two women and a resilient person. She quickly catches on to Mr. Reed's game and attempts to protect herself and Sister Paxton. Thatcher does a great job with her fear reactions and emoting. Chloe East as Sister Paxton is a little more naive than Sister Barnes and a lot more childish. East does a good job playing out the distinction while also giving great fear and pain reactions throughout the story. She also does a fantastic job during the finale when it was her character's turn to step up to the plate. Visually, the film takes place in a single location and heavily relies on upping the creep factor through the setting. The house that they use is a pretty awesome set. The upper facade is like something out of Fallout, a preserved time piece that just feels eerie in modern light. It gives you this sense of comfort, but once Mr. Reed starts to reveal his plan, you realize it's just a mousetrap waiting to spring. Then they move downward and the house turns into a creepy dungeon that just gets worse with each new level. Most of the runtime revolves around capturing the actors talking and the camera focuses on their emotions. There's a lot of close-up shots that perfectly frame the emotions of the situation and capture the actors' performances in great detail. It's a straightforward and easy-to-follow journey that gives you goosebumps. Sound-wise, the film uses a few original songs to make a point and a lot of instrumental tracks to create tension and a feeling of danger. The original songs are soft rock tracks that are used to talk about iterations. They alter them to make them sound a bit more haunting and distant, and they add a lot of atmosphere and discomfort into the scenes. The instrumental tracks are used to follow the emotional beats and add in large amounts of tension and danger. They do an incredibly effective job, coming in at the perfect volume, staying only as long as they're needed, and quickly shuffling off when they're done. They're not the most memorable of tracks, but they work well. Okay, now to address the elephant in the room. The story is exciting right up until the ending. You have these two women slowly being drawn deeper and deeper into a trap, and the longer you spend there, the more built up the ending gets. Then you get to the ending, and the film doesn't have anything fancy for you. It's just another supernatural bait and switch. The story also has a number of holes in it that would quickly put an end to Mr. Reed's fun if they were addressed. Like how he got the house built in the first place. It might as well have a sign on the front that just says Villain's Lair. If you aren't a big fan of religious debate or creepy atmospheres, there isn't much to offer in this film. The horror moments are few and far between and aren't overly gruesome or gory. There's only a couple of kills and they all happen within a relatively short period toward the end. Most of the entertainment comes from watching these two women squirm about in the trap looking for a way out. There is lots of tension as they try to play Mr. Reed's game and have their views of the world challenged along the way. The film does a good job of keeping the mystery alive until the end and presents an interesting set of characters. Personally, I was engrossed up until the ending. 
I think Hugh Grant does a fantastic job being creepy, but also sort of otherworldly. Like there's something almost supernatural about his giddiness while he's openly experimenting on women. The two young women, Sophie Thatcher and Chloe East, did a great job too. I also really liked the house, but I wish they had done more with it. They had the whole model thing in the basement and it had all kinds of moving parts, but we only see like five rooms. If you like psychological horrors and are looking for some light entertainment, give this a shot. Otherwise, give it a pass. As for a rating, I'd give this film a 7 out of 10. Remember, these are just my thoughts on the film. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Bye bye